This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, we have us a reaching cooler here that's not keeping temperature. The maintenance guys clean up the coils and it's still not working right. It's too cold, it's too warm. So let's go in here and take a look at it and see what's going on. Haven't done one of these for a little while, so I think it might be good to show it again. So let's go ahead and take a look at it and see if it's just a thermostat issue or if it's a refrigeration issue and how I narrowed it down. So what we got here is a true. Got ourselves an old mechanical control here. I can tell because it has the metal screws right there. I wanna make sure that this sensing bulb is in the coil. So let's take a look at that. Let's make sure that all of our fans are running, which they all are. Our coils look like they're clean here. When I looked earlier, yeah, they're clean. So we've got good airflow there. Let's take a look downstairs down here and take a look, see what we got on this. I wanna make sure that the uh, compressor's kicking on every time. So before I jump into just changing a control, I wanna make certain that, you know, the compressor's actually starting. You really can't know that unless you tear into it. All right, it just kicked on. It kicked on really smooth. Fan's running, so we know with the condenser fan, as of right now, it's working okay. We don't have any shorted wires. Let's see if they've got an isolation relay. So what bothers me is if I change this to electronic control, that there's a chance that it may end up taking electronic control out because they didn't provide a isolation relay to kind of take the brunt force of the amperage of the uh, compressor starting. Yeah, our coil's nice and clean. They did a good job on that. They kind of just keep that on there to help keep the stuff out, something we were doing. So they just copied us, but they're using a thicker material, which kind of, I think, could be a problem. Now, what you can do, and I kind of talked about it in the past, is you can actually Stop the evaporator fan, stick your thermometer in there, and if it gets down to about 18 degrees area, which is about what this actually shuts off at, because these thermostat controls are your actually defrost controls too. They are constant cut in, so they always kick in at like say 38 degrees or what have you. Uh, they cut out at about 18-ish, give or take. Some do it you know, up or down a couple degrees. But either way, they're sensing coil temperature. And if the coil doesn't get down to temperature because it's not got enough refrigerant in it, it won't shut off and it just runs and runs and it'll start to freeze up. But when you're getting all these wild swings, only thing it could be is the compressor's not starting or the control's junk. And I'm thinking towards the control being junk because we are perfectly uh, within range. When we got here, this thing was running right at about 34 degrees area, which looked pretty good. I'm gonna check and see which control this one takes. I think it takes the electronic one that I've got, so we'll probably just go with that and go that route. So obviously I'm at a uh, place that's restricted, such as a school, and they've got door safety here, the magnetic kind. So to get in and out without locking yourself out, all I do is I put my door jam here and that blocks it from making good contact to the magnet and it won't lock me out. So there it makes the buzzer happy, but yet I don't get locked out. And then I remove that when I walk in and out, that way, you're not compromising security because literally I'm parked not even 20 foot away. So nobody's gonna sneak in in the meantime. Surprisingly, I actually stock these on the truck and I actually have one here closer to the, the back door. It comes with the coil sensor and the sensor for the uh, air. I mean, you guys have seen this a couple times. This new one here comes with the relay. The old ones did not. Uh, my original one, let me look here and see if they got rid of it yet. Did they sneak one in? Yeah, this one here doesn't have that relay. I would prefer to have that relay on all of them. Unfortunately, they do not come all come with it. And since uh, the guy that's in charge of this place is one of my friends, I'm gonna make sure that I use the one that's got the best chance of not having problems. We're gonna go ahead and get that mounted down below. Let's get this thing up and going. You guys have seen this before, but we'll go ahead and go over it. I did it in another video. Uh, when these first came out, it was kind of cool because this kind of replaces a lot of different thermostats. Uh, and because it's actually sensing air temperature for the off temperature, it's not as critical as far as you have more, more opportunities. So anyhow, uh, door jam, check those guys out. That thing's awesome. 
So we got our temperature control here, which we've got our two different sensors, probe one, probe two. We've got a generic checklist on the back here, tells you what it's doing. You got your neutral line in, compressor going out, and auxiliary for th uh, fans that are different. There's the thing I was talking about being different. This is a isolation relay. I don't know, it's about gotta be 120 volts. What's this rated for? This is rated for 75 to 240 volts. In Thailand with pride. All right, so the black one goes in the air path, the white one goes in the coil. Shoot, has to be done by a qualified technician. Down here is our power plug. There you go, it's 120 volts, so we're good on that. And it's not been tapped or touched or molested by other people, so no reason to dink with the refrigerant if we don't need to. So we're gonna go ahead and drop this down. We got the temperature control right here, which looks to me like, yeah, this, it's, it's connected in there to the coil. It's not very well connected in there. You can see that half of it's out here, but they do have it in there. Looks like it's been in there for a little while. So we're just gonna change it. I'm not taking a chance on having a call back on it. And it looks like it's the original one, possibly. They actually hooked the putty back around the uh, tube that you're supposed to put around it. You need to figure out which one's the hot wire, because that's the one that has to go into the controller. Okay, we'll take this light out. In case here, we'll take the bulb out and it doesn't get broke. Now we can go ahead and get in here. Orange wire. That, that's one of your backup wires. I think I can get away with not using that. One of the things you're gonna have to do is you gotta get a neutral. And worst case scenario, we could use that orange black wire there for neutral, but Normally they break the power to the fans. It's pretty easy on this one. We can get the neutral uh, from the fans right here. If it was a freezer and things like that, that would cause some issues, but you gotta make sure that neutral's constantly powered. We wanna make sure that this is gonna reach that control, so we're gonna come high back here. And kinda of get in closer to this. So we can kinda of go right there. This should be neutral if everything's wired right. We'll strip that back. We'll check all that here in a second. Get a little way to go here. Let's plug that in there. I like looking at it from the backside to make sure that it's actually getting the wire into the socket far enough that it's not gonna pull out and it's not exposing a wire. Blue and white one, whether well, that's exactly the one we're gonna use it for neutral either way. Uh, they have a couple smaller speed terminals over there, which are for the uh, relay. So we're gonna connect that right on with the neutral. That's what I ran into a second ago, is the neutral did not fit in there on the terminal. There we go, so there's neutral. There's your um, wire going down and back again. That's gonna be these two here. So your compressor, whatever one goes down below, we're gonna hook it to that. So we gotta figure that out. We gotta turn the power back on. Make sure these stay isolated. We'll grab our meter and we'll check that. We're gonna take it, grab these two, and we're gonna find out which ones are hot lead. So we're gonna go to one of these. Try not to shock ourselves and we'll go to ground. Nothing there. Let's go to this one. There's 121 volts. So that's our hot lead right there. The other one's gonna go to the compressor. A lot of times I'll use either black or red. Since I have the red available, I'm going to go ahead and put the red on there like this. That way we know in DC terms, you figure, you know, some people get the, the relationship here, but obviously this one's our power wire. Most guys don't even do this. So we'll hook that one up to a line in. There you go. You can see the lights are lighting up. Now it's gonna send power out on this one here, which is the compressor. Right here on that one. 
and now we need to get our probes in there. But we're gonna go ahead and unplug it now, that way we don't get shocked or blow the control up. Probe one is black, that's gonna be the one that goes in airflow. We're gonna be putting that up there in this area up here. You don't like my other knifics, I bet you blow these lines and then use these for the, the nut. That's that's my actually my linesman's are my hammer, so I don't use them as much as I used to. I see some oil there, that's a matter of time before that goes out. Alright, we're gonna run this here. Back corner. I go that way, and then we'll run this back through there. Now that we're through here, we'll go ahead and pin this thing up in here. There we go. Bring that black probe over here to number one. Go ahead and attach that. Gonna get it hooked up. I will reattach all this and pretty it up when I'm ready to mount it up. We're gonna go ahead and bring this one. What I'll do a lot of times, I'll go ahead and bring this through some of this here to kind of make it easier so it doesn't get caught on stuff. You can mount it on the back side with an eyelet, but for me, it's just it's a little easier so it doesn't fall down. Less crap you gotta screw with. I try not to attach it to the power wires because I don't want any interference into my uh, sensing cables as far as temperature. I don't want nothing thrown off. It doesn't say that it'll do that, but I've just had problems in the past with things like that. So we're just going to attach that to there. Kind of clean up some of this wire in here. Then we'll strap the excess black and whatever else together with their things. This has to go that way if you want it to point towards it. So we'll mount it like this. And it'll go like that. Pull that through like that. Make sure all those wires are clear and everything. And then we'll slide it up into place. Uh, I'll go ahead and get one screw. Gotta get this mounted up and then we'll set out that other bulb, the white uh, sensor in the evaporator. Oh, that's fantastic. Junk. That's great. That's really great. So I did screw up. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a little dab of silicone on the back side. Once that dries, it'll be fine. You can easily take silicone apart. Uh, don't want to get too much or it'll get inside the, the switch there. Just gonna put a little bit there to help hold it in place. So I know that this is on zero. Defaults right around four, four and a half, five area. I'm gonna go ahead and set that up in there. That one. We're going to get that white wire back here and we're going to stick it up here at the top of the coil. Just at the very top, one, one right below the refrigerant tube in the coil. And we'll pinch that back together like that. And that way it holds it in place slightly. And we'll just stick this on a little bit of looseness back in there and that'll keep everything from getting touched because as you can see you're not able to see that at all and it's not going to fall and sag so we'll be good there on that and that's why i put those wires through the loops down here is where the power gets sent to the compressor what we're going to do is intercept it and we'll jump it so that instead of that power coming right from the thermostat it's going to power a relay instead as you'll see here in a second, if I can never get this garbage all undone because it's such a wreck, here's all your whites for your neutrals. The power wire coming down from above is 
going to eventually make its way over to this black lead, which goes to this pink one. So this pink one is going to be what's coming from the thermostat. That's what we need. We're going to go ahead and snip that. This one needs to hook up to the coil of the relay. We've got two tiny spade terminals. They give you one crimp one, which we're going to put it on that right there. Normally I would not pokey, but this is so small. I'm going to use the pokey. There we go. That's going to hook onto a coil like that. Now we're going to need a neutral. That's the other small one here. That's going to tie into the white ones. They used to have a bigger relay. This one's not very big. And that's going to poke right in here with these other neutrals. And there's one empty spot. Look at that. Up it goes, and then it is. Now that'll energize the coil. Now, we're going to take the power lead that was cut loose, which is right here, and we're going to attach that to the relay. I gave us enough Wago terminals here to wire the block. So let's go ahead and get this one right here. And we'll lock that in there. And then we're going to extend it to this one. There we go. And that's going to come down to take your choice. Don't really matter. It's just an open closed circuit. And let's just tie on to one side of the relay here. And we got one left over here that's going to go to one of the powers, which is going to be right here. So this black wire here, black mess, which they have one extra. And this is stranded, but it should fit in there. Yep. Yep, they have other strandeds, so that's good. I just need to get a crimp on, and we will crimp it to that. And the whole purpose of this is, is they're letting the uh, thermostat that's, you know, lightweight relay in there, which originally they wired straight to the compressor, control the coil. The coil is just going to make the switch close. It's going to let the power go in and out to the compressor, and you'll be hunky-dory. Uh, we're going to mount this thing in here somewhere, probably on the bottom. And honestly, I think we might be able to tie on to that one screw there. We wouldn't have to fool with it because that's pretty thick, pretty thick stuff. There we go. It's not going anywhere. It's tight. I usually put a couple of them in there, but I'm not too worried about it in that box like it is. We'll be fine. That's really, really thick metal right there. And what to tap into it, you're going to have to go get a pretty good sized screw. And it's not going to go anywhere. Okay. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on. All right, it is running. Let's let it run for a while and see if we hit temperature. Let it run for a little bit. We cycled it off and back on again, and it's holding perfect. It shut off at 34 degrees. All the lights work, all the fans are running. We got our thermostat set. I told the maintenance guy what happened with the thermostat. He said he's fine with that. And uh, everything's back together and we're doing good. So um, that's how I determined it, was just kind of by making sure that everything's clean and clear and if it's overcooling and just asking the right questions. All right, guys, that's going to wrap that one up. The way I decided that it was going to be the refrigerant controls because we made sure that everything was cooling properly on the refrigerant side. We made sure the motors were good, made sure the coils were clean. Talked to the ladies at, in the cafeteria there just to kind of make sure everything was working the way it should. And then uh, went ahead and changed the thermostat control there. Uh, that control there has got a constant cut in very similar to the other one. Uh, it uses air temperature for that, and then it uses the temperature control that's in the coil to know when to kick back in. So you've kind of got some true measurements there of what the actual air temperature is, whereas the other one was always kind of a calculated uh, number off of the uh, coil itself. And then this has its own built-in algorithm for doing the defrost, if I remember correctly. It was kind of a short video, kind of simplistic, but you know, unless you're searching through my uh, video archives, you'll miss a lot of these different things. 
want to thank all these new subscribers and stuff guys i haven't said that very often lately but it's been growing quite a bit and i want to thank you guys for watching i thank you for subscribing the thing that helps the channel more than anything is by hitting the like button that's almost more important than even getting subscribed but and if you're not going to subscribe if you would at least hit that like button that helps a lot honestly negative or positive either or it just kind of says show it don't show it whatever they still will recommend it either way it just the uh, that's one of the many ways that they do the algorithm to determine whether to recommend it to other people anyhow i'm going to be going down to ahr in atlanta here this is february 2023 and uh gonna get some good footage down there i can't wait to do that might throw this one out there as kind of a small video in between because i don't have a lot lately i've got other ones to do but every time you're always looking for that master hit and you don't always get it uh, what you think is going to be popular is and what you don't isn't or is or vice versa, whatever. So anyhow, guys, we're going to wrap that up. Till next time, catch you on the next one. Later.